Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, a, um, another SOLIDWORKS tutorial. So what we're going to attempt here is a three-arm junction, which has an insided surface, uh, insided N being number six, six edges in this case, six-sided six boundary. So in SOLIDWORKS you could use a fill surface uh, and use a a uh, cross curve to control it, but um, <clears throat> I prefer to try and do this the old fashioned way using four sided surfaces. So I'll be using four sided surfaces and trimming um, to get the result. So to begin with, we're going to insert some, um, some reference surfaces, so some ruled surfaces, tangent surface. So I'm just going to make these um, five mils long, alternate faces. So I want, basically, I'm, I need to get some tangent information off these ruled surfaces. So we make them tangent to the top crown surface, like that. So what I'm going to do is um, construct one main curve through the center here, which will control a lot of the information. First, I need to put a um, a reference curve in to control the uh, the angle of the spline on this end. So I've set a, a plane on the midpoint of that end curve edge. I mean, okay. So I'm just going to put two lines in the top one with construction pierce point relationship with the edge. And make the top line horizontal and then add some dimensions. Whoops, where'd that go? Right. And an angle. So this is the angle we will change to control this end of the spline. Okay. So now I need to create a curve uh, through here. So we're going to end insert 3d sketch and then use a style spline four cvs oops that tangent on this end Just adjust the spline because it's in 3D space, so it's a bit random. Make that end tangent. Okay, now I'm going to add dimensions to the um, the first hull. And also to the last hull. Okay. So this is the main curve controlling the form through the middle of our blend. Let's have a check of the curvature. That's alright for now. We can come back and change everything, tweak things later. It's the thing with this kind of blend, you kind of want to block on the surfaces and then you want to go back and tweak the um, construction. Tweak some dimensions to get a good result. Okay, so if that's a cross curve, I need to, so we've got one, two, three, and now I've got to put a boundary across here. So I'm going to put a, a sketch in right across there, so we end up with four boundaries. So I'm going to insert a plane through those two points, and then third reference we're going to use a perpendicular to, we'll go perpendicular to the top plane. Hit OK. Just resize that plane a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to insert a sketch and then intersection curve with our two ruled surfaces that we pulled in earlier. Okay, so those are those are tangent references because this curve we're putting in has to have a tangent relationship with those the two crown surfaces. But uh, without extending those surfaces. Uh, I put the rolled surface on instead. So now we're going to insert 
Star Wars Blind again. And make it tangent to our uh, intersection curves. And by proxy that will be tangent to our crown surfaces that the ruled surfaces re reference. Okay. So now we'll have to bring up the main cross curve there, the main, and add a point. Make that point coincident to both of the curves because we want to clip the curves together basically. So this new sketch is referencing the 3D sketch. Okay, there we go. And now I just need to add some dimensions to control these CVs. And again, I'll add some dimensions now. Um, this is the kind of thing, again, you block it out and you come back later once you have a, a, um, a good modelling intent figured out. If you, we just want to figure out a modelling intent that's going to give us a good result and then we can go back and tweak it. There's 10 different ways to skin a cat, so this is just one way of uh, solving this modelling challenge. Okay, curvature is a bit, bit rampy on the end, so we'll just make those uh, dimensions a bit longer. It's looking alright. Play with this middle, I made those equal. So you could bias it one way or the other if you wanted to. But I think for this, um, for the purpose of this, we'll just leave those with equal relationship in the middle. Turn the curvature off. Okay. So now we can insert a surface. Okay, insert surface boundary. Pick your edge there. Pick the curve at the other end of that direction, direction two. We're going to pick the spline that made the side. We're going to selection manager the middle curve and endpoint there to the direction one curve okay so now we need to make our edge tangent at the top there tangent to face and turn the curvature influence up because that's the only thing influencing uh, tangency okay we can hide our two reference surfaces there the ruled ones right so as you can see there the the, the, the zebra stripes are flowing okay. Um, now, the gap we have left to fill is a four-sided boundary at the moment, but it doesn't flow very well. As you can see, there's a straight line on the top. So what we're going to end at the bottom, it's curved. So to try and get a nice even flow, I will trim back the boundary surface with a sketch. So top plane will sketch... Going to insert a style spline. Four CVs. And we'll make it tangent or collinear because those are both lines. The hull's a line and so is the edge there. Straight. Okay, and we can dimension the length there again is probably something that if you're trying to get a really nice result you go back and tweak after we've blocked in all the surfaces okay so we're going to use that curve to trim the surface insert surface trim okay 
Take the piece. There we go. Right. <clears throat> so now we have four boundaries with a nice flow. So we also have the cross curve in the middle there, the first curve, the main one, that we can try and use. Um, sometimes I have to put in a, a separate um, cross curve just because SolidWorks has a few issues. Right, I should be able to pull this back, but it doesn't want to clip to that edge, which makes me wonder if it's slightly not on there. The surface isn't matching it properly. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and see what we get here. Okay, and pick the edge because we need tangency on that. And now we just need to set our um, tangent conditions on the edges. Tangent to face. Um, I'll increase the tangent influence, see what happens. Let's have a look at that. Stitches off. Okay, not too bad. Oh, it's a bit wiggly around the bottom. It joins one of the arms there. suspect it's not matching that mid curve there because I couldn't get it to when I use the selection manager I couldn't get it to clip okay I'm going to delete that um, I'm going to hide that and I'm just going to add on this plane 4 just going to add a little cross curve intersection curve okay so there's a reference and then I'll just add a style spline 3 point Make the send here pierce relationship tangent and the other end tangent to our intersection curve. Okay, see it added a CV automatically. That's because it SolidWorks can't match the tangency, it adds CV sometimes. Okay, I'm just gonna make all the hulls length equal. Right, so I'm gonna use that as a cross curve instead of the master curve that was in there earlier. They'll be pretty close. There won't be much difference between them. Because they're both using the same references. Okay. I'm going to try this with a loft this time, as you can see. Okay, edges. Tangent to face. Tangent to face. Still got that little gribble down the bottom. Do it with the boundary. One, two, three in the first direction, second direction. One, two, tangent to face, tangent to face, tangent to face, and then turn up the influence. There we go. Okay. Doesn't look too bad. Um, I think I'll leave it there for now. I can go back and tweak the dimensions. I might have too much crowning in one area or or it might be too flat and that all these sorts of things add up. Um again it's about finding a a, a modeling uh, an approach that's gonna give us a good result. So this doesn't look like it's got too many bad things going on, so it's worth it's worth tweaking. I'm just trying sometimes the tang tangent influences you have to change. Have one hundred percent in one direction, hunt not and zero percent in the other. Okay, I'm just going to knit everything together. Okay, have a look without the um, edges on. So there you go. So that's a a three arm junction with. Yeah, the inside of the surface. I mean, that might be a five-arm junction or a four-arm junction. You know, it could be, could be all sorts of things. There's lots of times you 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 stumble across five, a five-edged boundary, which can be a real nightmare. So I can tweak this, as you can see there. 
that's the thing, there's a lot of control over this, you can go back and tweak things to try and get it a little bit better. Okay, um, let's just see if we can um, add some fillets to the edges. Always a good test to see how well your surface thing's working. Oh, five's a bit big. Let's try one. Two. Hit enter. Okay. Turn the stripes on. Short cutter key for your zebra stripes, by the way. It's way easier than going up to the view menu. Okay. We'll delete those uh, fillets. Let's just try doing an offset surface. So we'll select, select the body, surface body, okay, and offset it inwards, a millimetre, see what happens, is it going to work, yes, okay, look, no extra surfaces, sometimes SolidWorks doesn't like an offset, it will add an extra patch in, but that's all good, it hasn't done it, okay, two millimetres, alright, so if this was a uh, ejection moulding, there you go, you've got your flexibility to go and create shells. Using offset surfaces, of course. You don't use the shell feature. <laughs> um, okay, that's another video from AJ Design Studio. Andrew Jackson. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, bye.